So you never heard any good stories? No. You, you never heard no good stories about that? No. You want children? I got two daughters. You got two daughters. Like, why do people prioritize having kids before having be, before being married? Like, <laughs> welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Giselle Vinya, and I'm thankful for all the support I've received. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on your bell notifications so you don't miss a post. In today's video, we delve into a thought-provoking topic, the glorification of being a baby mother before a wife within the black community. Join us as we hear from real women sharing their stories and experiences. Is society placing more emphasis on motherhood over marriage? Let's talk about it. But before we dive into this discussion, I invite experienced women to share their insights below. Is it better to be married with children or single with children? Your perspectives will enrich our conversation and shed light on the complexities of these roles. Join us for an insightful conversation and let's explore this topic together. I'm going to like this message, but what we're not going to do in 2023 is encourage women to become baby mamas. The baby mama culture and hookup culture had the same severity and you want to stay away from both. But in regards to baby mama culture, before we even get to the point that you are a baby mom, we need to look at what happens before. If he tell you he gonna get you pregnant, that's a threat. And if a man release inside of you without your knowledge or consent, that's a felony. So make sure you wear protection. And also, make sure you deal with a man that understand birth control, what it is, and how it works, and how it affects you. And make sure you date a man that understand the severity of wearing protection. And getting tested. Let's carry on. If you're dating a cockroach, which means the wrong man, once you tell him about the two lines on the stick, he then hates you. Matter of fact, get rid of it. You keep it. You're going to be talking to him from an app. And he's still going to be harassing you on an app that the courts can see. Imagine co-parenting and trying to date. Co-parenting a narcissist and trying to date. Wow. Imagine no freedom. Be a wife first. I'm not going to lie. I'm probably going to make some people mad when I say this. But I've been wanting to talk about this subject for like a long time. If you're a woman and sleeping around is what you do, if you like hopping from man to man, sleeping with this dude, sleeping with that dude, sneaky linking this, sneaky linking that, that's you, that's your business, no judgment. But when you do that, you need to be ready for the backlash and the consequences that you have to deal with with your own actions. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with sleeping around. Well, I am. But if that's what you want to do, that's your lifestyle, no judgment. But like you need to be ready for that backlash and that judgment that comes with you doing that because there are consequences, especially when you have kids because you're doing it. I just sat up there and watched the whole episode of the Karamo show and this do and like and like Steve Wilkos and Maury like I was just watching like comp compilations of them or whatever and I watched this recent one of the Karamo show and this dude was trying to find his dad and like his mom was over here talking about some, oh yeah that's the, for sure his dad that's for sure his dad that's his dad and this and this dude is sitting over here mad at this old man he's like oh you were never a part of my life I know you're my dad this and this and that the dude's trying to tell him I'm not your dad I'm not your dad well, they ended up reading, like, the results, and it turned out that, that wasn't his dad. And the dude was so heartbroken. Like, you could tell he was crushed because for 32 years, he'd been trying to find his dad. He'd been trying to find out who his real dad was because his mom, you know, was doing what she was doing back in the day. Didn't want to tell him, oh, it's this person. Oh, it's that person. Like, like if you could see the look on some of these men's faces when they find out, like, like have to sit up there and do, like, imagine. That's so embarrassing. Imagine having to go on a show to figure out who your biological dad is because your mom does slept with 101 people. You guys sit up there and six, seven dudes on the show trying to figure out which one is your daddy. Like, that's embarrassing. Not just embarrassing for you, but like, bro, okay, everybody protective over their mama, but you already know what people finna, finna be saying over you about your mama. And you can't defend her because it's like, well, it's true. And it's like, for women that do stuff like that, like, you gotta think about it before you just go around laying around with anybody. Because, okay, yeah, it's you do you, and it's your life. You do what you want with your life. It's your body. But as soon as, but the minute you bring another body onto this earth, you gotta realize what you're doing to that child. They're suffering a lot of men, young men and young girls suffer a, lot, a great deal of pain and heartbreak and feel like they're abandonment and have a, a void in their life that they feel like they can't feel because they don't have a father and they don't know who their father is. And every time they ask you, it's an attitude here, it's an attitude there. You don't need your daddy. Am I not good enough? And it's, oh, it's that person or it might be that person. Like, do you know how, like, that's so heartbreaking and it's so embarrassing. 
Like, that's so, I, I just can't. Like, it's so embarrassing. And when I was watching the Karamo show, like, the dude literally, like, he was, you can tell he was trying not to cry. Like, you know how when your throat get, like, all, like, tight and everything? Like, he just got up and he just said he done. He walked off the show. And I'm pretty sure he didn't walk off just because he was mad, but he was embarrassed. Like, imagine. His mama sat up there and done told everybody in the audience, oh, yeah, that's that's his daddy for sure. That's his daddy for sure. After after she had she had admitted their the possibility of there being one but it turns out that that one wasn't it so this one that was on the show she was like oh yeah that's for sure his dad results came back dna results not his daddy so who's his father who are you sleeping around with can you even remember because you were sleeping around with so many people to the point where you don't even remember who you slept with or maybe you do remember but you don't know how to find them your son is now dealing with a great deal of pain because you want to go sleep around with everybody like i'm not judging like if that's your lifestyle yes you like sneaky link in here sneaky link in there sleep on that person here sleep on that person there like that's fine but what you have to understand is that the minute you bring another life into, into this earth into this earth you gotta you gotta you gotta start rethinking your decisions i know like a lot of men in real life and boys my age in real life who have resentment towards their mother who have resentment towards their mother because of that. They're embarrassed of their mothers. They're very embarrassed of their mothers because of that. Because they know this it's a possibility of 30 dudes being their dad. 30, 20, if I'm being, you know, if I'm being nice. Like, imagine, that's so embarrassing. And that's so freaking heartbro heartbreaking, bro. Like, that's so heartbreaking. And it angers me. And it's like, okay, I understand, like, you know, the mother may have been going through a lot or whatever. But it's just like, dude, like, you got to, like, your decisions don't just impact yourself. Especially when you have, like, another life on this earth. Like, decisions you two make, who you sleep around with, who you do something with, don't just impact your life. Out of here, why, why you said no first? Just no. I don't want to get married. I hear a lot of bad stories. So you never heard any good stories? No. You, you never heard it? no good stories about marriage? No. You want children? I got two daughters. You got two daughters. Like, why do people prioritize having kids before having be, before being married? Like, <laughs> um, Don't you think a man in a household would be the complete package for your situation? Sometimes the one you married ain't even a complete package. You can have a whole wife and kids, and then it wasn't even a fuck it. I just can't see how people were prioritizing having a child <laughs> before being married. Like, that doesn't... That's the same cycle we we've been in and that's the same cycle that's continued to hold us back what's something that people glamorize that's actually just extremely toxic baby mama culture in the black community the most toxic thing i've ever seen someone had to say it. he literally will glamorize the lifestyles of baby mamas of rappers or successful men as if that's something to glamorize. If behind closed doors, everything is pretty. There's nothing glamorous about being publicly disrespected time and time again. And then to make it even worse, they treat these men who disrespect and cheat on women like a tradition as the prize. No one is winning because that man needs to be alone or he needs to understand the value of women because clearly he doesn't understand it. And it wouldn't be me if I didn't talk about how this adversely affects the black community as a whole. 70% of black children are being born outside of marriages. This is one of the biggest problems why black people cannot build economic wealth having a child when you already don't have economic wealth just compounds your poverty pretty much bringing children into a world of struggle question why is it that black mothers mistreat their daughters just for their daughters to become the only ones they can depend on like let's be clear i love my mother very much i am healed i know that she's not just a mom she's a human being who had her own mom and all i can do is break the generational curses but i'm not going to lie i just be thinking sometimes like girl where are your sons where are the ones that, that could do no wrong in your eyes why are you calling the one that you was kicking out every other goddamn week the one whose phone and shoes and clothes you were destroying like forgiving you for the trauma yes forgotten it no like i just think it's so crazy that the most mistreated child always becomes the most dependable and i mean i know why it's because we didn't have a fucking choice we didn't have a safe space so we created our own and now you want me to share it with you oh jesus the article kind of talks about how the kardashians are reinventing how it is to be in a relationship so i was tagged in this video and i was asked to give my opinion and I'm not gonna say much, but I think this is very toxic. I talked about this not that long ago and I think glamorizing baby mama culture is just a no. If you guys follow me on here, you guys know that I am more into traditional relationships. If you're not into traditional relationships, please keep scrolling. 
Personally, I think getting pregnant with a person that you are not even with, like Travis and Kylie have not even been a couple for a while. I think that is reckless. It's not reckless for them because they have millions of dollars. But young girls, 15, 16, 17 year old girls watching them and thinking that it's okay then going to get pregnant and being left as single moms is not cute, nor beneficial to women. Listen, I will forever be against baby mama culture as a young black American woman. And for those of you who like to come into my comments and believe that marriage does not matter, I swear to God, I really want y'all to just run into a brick wall super fast and just pass out. You cannot sit here and tell me that marriage doesn't matter or marriage doesn't have an effect when 75% of black children are raised in single parent households. Oh, I'm sorry, fatherless homes. Let's just call it what it is. That is a big problem because what affects you the most more than race, more than economic class, more than education is whether or not there is a father present in the household. Throughout all the communities and throughout all the cultures of civilizations throughout different societies within this world, for some reason, we have been duped to praise, to advertise, to promote, to condone, to normalize single parent households. To such an extent that we don't even look past it whenever people like Old Navy or Target or Amazon, well, Rugrats as well, just making it seem like it's natural for black children to be raised in single parent households, for a black woman to raise children all by herself because she couldn't keep a committed relationship with a man. She's not capable of doing that. That's what it shows, that the black woman is not capable of keeping a man. She's not capable of keeping a household together. It shows to the black man that he's not capable of being committed to a woman of staying down for a woman, of actually properly being committed to the point of marrying a woman and then having children. It looks bad on both ends for black men and black women. Child, not Holly Bailey confirming that she was indeed pregnant and has had the baby. After months of speculation about whether or not Holly is pregnant, it looks like all the rumors were true because Miss Girl has been pregnant all along and recently gave birth. But if you're waiting to see pictures of the baby, well, you're going to be waiting for a really long time because Holly also claimed that she is never going to post a picture of her baby and y'all won't believe the reason why. So it looks like congratulations are in order for Holly Bailey and DDG because she recently gave birth to their first child. The streets have been saying for a couple of months now that Holly is pregnant, but she has been keeping her mouth shut on that and she chose to keep her pregnancy private. And it's not hard to see why she chose to keep the pregnancy journey private because there was a lot going on with her. First, there's the fact that her relationship with DDG often comes under fire from fans and people on social media because they think that she deserves way better than DDG because he's just so nasty. Or at least that's what people believe. For one, there's the fact that he keeps embarrassing Hallie on social media and people think that he's jealous of her success and wants to make her look bad at all. Hey y'all, so before y'all have sex tonight, just remember one thing, it's too much hot outside to carry a kid everywhere. I'm about to cry, okay? Um, my, my coochie is sweating. Um, I don't know if milk is leaking from these titties or if it's boob sweat that I feel on me, but I'm hot. Um, she can't walk nowhere. She don't even have on shoes if she wanted to. Um, it's too hot. I got on this fucking... I couldn't even zip the damn bag. I got on these three bags. I got this random man's kit from Atlanta just attached to my hip all summertime. This is not the outfit that I sent her in, by the way. Um, she came home from daycare. This is not her shirt. Where is her bow at? Gee, where, 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 where did you put your bow at? Gee, where? So I've been seeing the video circulating of the random man in Atlanta posting that he was at the same restaurant at the same time that Morgan was when she went on her date with Gigi, right? So I decided to take Gigi on a date. We barely go out and do things together. I can finally spend so much time with her now that I don't work. We went to Black Rock. She slept the whole time. So anyways, while Gigi was sleeping, I was putting anything on my steak. I don't know. <laughs> Up, this, is this is just a PSA that I want to give to anybody that's thinking about uploading content about a situation that they're going through. I want you to understand the gravity of what you're about to do when you upload this shit to the internet because it's forever. If you don't want nobody telling you about your life and your situation or giving you unsolicited advice, you need to learn how to suffer in silence. And if you don't want to suffer in silence, I highly suggest you use your health benefits and find you a fucking therapist. And if you ain't got health insurance, well, God damn it, you need to search and find one that you can pay for out of pocket. Somebody that's going to just listen to you vent and give you some tools to help you elevate yourself about your situation. 
Because when you sit your happy ass in front of a camera and you share your sob story or the fucked up situation that you're in, just know you're asking for accountability partners. When you put out there that you're going to stand on business and you're going to rise above a fucked up situation, that's what people are looking at you to do. So when you no longer want to stand on business, you want to lay down on business, you want to sit down on the business. Hell, you don't even want shit to do with the business anymore. People going to start looking at your ass funny and sideways and they're going to always make your ass remember what the fuck you said. Right. So you can't necessarily get mad at people when they give their unsolicited opinions, because, again, you ask for accountability partners and that's what they're essentially doing. So. One thing I know about the game of spades is that people hate, especially black people. We hate a real, um, if you're going to renege on some, just know this is what's going to come with the territory. See, you got to understand that random man is a hundred percent aware of what's going on. And he did that shit on purpose to embarrass you even more. He posted that shit because he knew that the internet was on your ass right now. And that you over here stressing. You reading these comments and these stories and think pieces about yourself and you stress the fuck out. And I honestly feel like that man got a hard on watching this shit play out. And every time you somewhere making content, he in the background making sounds, talking, fucking it up. When you on live, he sitting beside you. You can't convince me he not getting his motherfucking lick back. Because I told you, if you didn't get ahead of this and let your audience know he was around, he was going to do it. And what is he doing? He he dropping them little breadcrumbs to let you know he's still there. Nobody has a problem with you being with your baby daddy. That's your business. But unfortunately, you fucked up and you brought it to the internet. And this is what it is. May the odds be forever in your favor, Morgan. And I hope it works out for you. In today's society, success is often measured by financial independence and professional accomplishments. Take Rihanna, for instance, a billionaire with the means to provide for her children without the need for a traditional marriage. This raises the question, should women at her level of success still feel compelled to prioritize marriage? As a pregnant black woman, I hate when I forget my ring at the house because I already And like being a mom and having kids just became like so casual. Not only is becoming a mom and having kids be becoming super casual, it's specifically people promoting and glorifying being a single mom. I'm not a single mom, but I do know single moms who are not happy and, you know, cheering on being single moms. Who wants to really be a single mom? I think, you know, we take away so much of what goes into like, what it's like to be a mom, like that is not a joke. Like for your body to just give life, when you really sit and think about like your body literally created a life and gave life, like that is, how can you make that casual? How? Like it blows my mind to just think about how much of a big deal it is and for God to give me that ability to create life. There's nothing casual about it. Um, nothing at all. But unfortunately, right, it's, it, it is so casual. It is a thing to do. It is almost like that's all, once you do that, it's like, I don't know, like you made it. Like you have so many young girls who are looking up to that and who already want to have a baby because, you know what I mean? So I, I can't even tell you the amount of times I've told students of mine, like, girl, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. You have no idea. When I have young girls, let me tell you something. When I have young students who tell me they're pregnant, um, I'm not congratulating them. Congratulations. I want to talk about real life with them about what life may be like. I'm not saying this is what it's going to be, what it could be like, because you are 15 years old. You have no idea what you're about to get your, what your life is about to be like, right? Like, I don't want, like, yes, it's a celebration of life per se, but I feel bad. Because it's not easy. You know, the amount of young girls that I've met, students of mine who say, 
I don't want to be an old mom. I want to have my baby when I'm like 17, like 18 years old. I don't want to be old because it's it's so, like, it's no big deal. And it is a very big deal and they don't get it and they don't understand it. And they, because they're, they're seeing people specifically on this app, on this app, we have that young girl, young girl who is TikTok famous now because she talked about, and she's, you know, just being a baby mom. And it's like all funny and, and jokes and laughs. And it's like, it's nothing funny about it. And as black women, it's just, mm mm-mm. Like, I, I, it really bothers me of how much our community is staying in the same place because people are now trying to turn something that has never been a good thing into good things. Like, we're just trying to normalize things that should not be normalized. We should not be normalizing being a single mom. We shouldn't. We should not normalize that. If you have to do that, you have to do it. But to normalize it and to tell another woman, even another another woman, an adult, that is like, girl, you'll be fine. You, you, yes, you'll be fine. But to promote it like it's all fun and games because everybody can't connect the two. Everybody can't. They can't. They only see and what they think is good. But it, it, it's, it's, it's sad. It is very sad, y'all. We have to do better. I want to get this off my chest, and I want to be politically correct. But I feel like in order for me to be real. I just got to be real. Okay. Back in the day, if you're a woman and you're watching this, your ancestors, they didn't play that broke shit. If a man couldn't provide for you, he just didn't have bitches. Men that could not provide didn't have bitches. That was not a luxury for them. Men that actually had something to offer. Those were the men that got married. Those were the men whose last names carried on. You have your last name because somewhere way down the line, somebody has shit. So why are you laying up next to a loser, somebody that want to start a podcast and you're eight months pregnant with his kid and he want to be Adam 22? Are you fucking dumb? Like, are you really fucking dumb, bitch? And I mean that from the bottom of my fucking heart. I have had my fair share of dumb men stupid toxic relationships i'm not better than nobody i've walked that road i've gone down that path but i've never looked at a loser and said i'm gonna have his fucking kid like that was never ever ever a thought that crossed my mind it was bad enough that i was already caught up it was bad enough that people already knew i was with that man but to actually have physical evidence that at some point we were intimate together aka a child bitch that's crazy that's fucking crazy like y'all are sitting up here getting pregnant by people that can't even take care of themselves he got in a relationship with you because he literally wants another mom he has never lived alone he can't even get an apartment in his own fucking name and you looked at him and said that's just my baby daddy like are you fucking dumb are you serious you are i know you are look at your fucking kid right now i really don't understand when like being a mom and having kids just became like so casual because it's actually like really a big deal to like bring life into this world it's like a huge responsibility and i feel like more people should be like discerning you know what i'm saying and i'm not even sitting up here trying to make it seem like um everybody that has money or everybody that's able to provide automatically qualifies as a decent parent that's up to you bitch I'm not about to hold your hand and help you figure out what man will make a good dad for you. That's all you and God. Not like, literally, that ain't got nothing to do with me. What I'm saying is, bare minimum, can he get an apartment in his name? What is his credit score, mama? Did he at least try to go to school? You got all these hopes, all these dreams, and he just laying next to you like, and you and you want to carry on that name because the baby doesn't get your name the baby gets his name that's what you want to carry on into the like really like for real like this shit may sound so fucked up but i really don't care you want to bring a baby loser into this world are you fucking serious are you serious like Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott's w magazine cover was leaked online after it was pulled due to astroworld 
Stormy obviously was on the cover and involved in the photo shoot, but one of the biggest takeaways from the whole article is that Kylie and Travis are not a couple and they have not been for two years. The article kind of talks about how the Kardashians are reinventing how it is to be in a relationship. Like this isn't the typical normal relationship, but it's normal for the Kardashians. This photo shoot obviously was Kylie's like first pregnancy photo shoot and really was going to be epic because her first pregnancy was a complete secret. If you want to see all the pictures, I'm going to post them on my Instagram at Game with the Spray Tans. You can zoom in and see all the photos that were inside. But let me know what your thoughts are on this whole situation and especially Kylie and Travis's relationship. And if you're wanting a copy of this magazine yourself, you can go on eBay and the starting bid is at $250. That I didn't want to be a baby mama. Now here come the baby mama trolls. And I just wanted to add my own two cents in because everything this creator said is 100% true. It is very valid to not want to be a baby mother. And every time I speak about topics like this, even witnessing in her comments, a lot of the people were like, well, you could still end up married with a man, have his kids and still end up being alone. Yeah, but there's a difference between a baby mother and what an ex-wife. Y'all want to make excuses so bad. Baby mother culture has got y'all on a chokehold. It's just like, it's not something that should be glorified. It only benefits the men. Naomi Osaka posted pictures of her baby shower. She is having a little baby girl. This is so cute. I love the color scheme. I love her outfit, surprisingly. I'm not like a really big like crop top, athleisure kind of girly, but this is really cute. A little selfie. If you did not know, she's expecting a baby with rapper Corday. And I love the trend of taking photos using a film camera, or maybe this is just a film filter, but nonetheless, it looks really cute. I'm so happy for her, and I can't wait until she has her little baby girl. Rihanna let the world know that she is having a baby, and we're so excited for her. And of course, people have their opinions, and I have mine, in my opinion, maybe a little bit different from most people. Aside from being happy for her that she's entering a stage in her life that she's always wanted, a lot of people are comparing her relationship with ASAP Rocky and saying that she's downgraded from her previous relationship with Jamil Hassan, which is a billionaire, um, like Muslim guy from like Saudi Arabia. But of course, in conversations like this about hypergamy and all this kind of stuff, a lot of nuance is taken out of it, right? Rihanna isn't a regular person who will get trapped in motherhood. Rihanna can have three, four, five children by herself if she wants to and have three, four, five nannies. So her being a single mother and us regular people being single mothers are very different. I say she don't get married at all. I mean, unless she has like a Fort Knox level, ironclad prenuptial agreement, it's best for her to just be a baby mama since this is the person that she chose. Being a baby mama hit differently when you're a billionaire. She, We not on that level. So we have to be more picky when it comes to who we, cause being a mother, being a single mother for us regular people will make and break our entire existence. It's not gonna do that for Rihanna. And honestly, it's fiscally sound for her to not even get married at this point, especially not to him. And it's quite difficult. I mean, if you're a, a black woman worth a billion dollars, you're not gonna be able to practice hypergamy like that. And take it from me, from firsthand experience, dating a muslim arab man it's in some ways great but the cultural the intercultural differences it's next to impossible and that's just me being a thousand percent upfront. it happens it can work but i come up from a very conservative background too and even then i'm still very much american and the amount it would take to make that kind of relationship work is a lot. She would have to totally change her identity. Even me as a regular person, like I would have to change who I am and I'm not willing to do that. And I'm pretty sure Rihanna isn't either. So a lot of people say things like that in theory, but when you experience that kind of thing, sometimes it be at this point, black women know that we have options outside of just black men. And it's okay to explore those options, but you have to be realistic at the same time too. Especially when you're dating someone from a very different culture. Now, if you are all American, 
American and you're different races and ethnicities, then you may be able, it'll be easier to come together and make it work. But someone from a different country. In conclusion, the debate over whether women should desire marriage before bearing children is ongoing and multifaceted. Your perspectives and experience shared in the comments below add depth to this conversation. Thank you for tuning in and contributing your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe for more engaging discussions and check the description box for ways to connect, whether it's sending topics, videos, or simply chatting. Thank you for tuning in and have a blessed day. Bye. Nobody.